Hey, everybody. Another fabulous edition of Bird Brain 66 here with my good buddy, Brian Bretsch. What's up, Brian? It's all good, Andy. How are you this morning? Doing fantastic on this uh, lovely morning. Uh, we are here today to look at the uh, 1981 Tops set. It's, uh, it's one of those fabulous sets from the 80s. It um, has 726 total in the uh, regular issue set with uh, 26 Cardinals. And in a traded set, there are 100 and, would you say, 126? 132. Oh, 100. So that's, pardon me, 132 with seven Cardinals. There we go. Right. Yep. What is unique about the traded set for this particular year is they just did a continuation in the sequence of numbers instead of adding 1T, 5T, or 100T on the back of the card for numbering, which I prefer just to have the numbers on there. But unfortunately, they only did it this particular year. But anyway, we will move forward. The beautiful uh, yellow border with the red hat. I love that. Silent George. And just for everybody's education back in the day, home run leader, 18 home runs. <laughs> he probably would have had more, but it was a strike shortened season. But still, 18 home runs in the number of games that they played by today's standards is like people would freak out if, if that mm. was going on right now. Although we would take it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Be careful right. what you say. <laughs> Nice classic tops design on the front and the back. What's unique about all the 80s cards is they all had a unique design to them. They weren't almost a carbon copy of what happened the year before. So yeah, and, that, like and, that goes, and that goes with the 60s, 70s as well. And right. Bobby Bonds here love the uh smile on his face. Um I applaud Tops even back in the day. Um just for putting that ball cap on the card to begin with, if it was like the beginning of desktop publishing, which I don't think that it was. I mean, there was a lot of time and effort put into designing that card and making it happen, not only for the Cardinals, but the other teams. I, I love it. Um, you know, I was looking up and doing a little bit of homework, probably a couple of the uh, popular rookies in this uh, set were Fernando Valenzuela. He was the rage. Uh, and uh, Kirk Gibson, with who was with the Tigers before he yep. hit massive home run for the uh, for the Dodgers in the World Series against the A's. But you know, this was taking us back into our days of collecting when we were really young and buying, you know, wax pack after wax pack after wax pack. And um, I remember finally coming up with a, a Fernando card and was, it was a great, uh, don't know if you got yours before me, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, it was just, that was the coveted card and believe it or not, uh, it, it wasn't a covenant card at that time, but uh, it was also John Tudor's rookie season with the Red Sox before yeah. he came onto the Cardinals and had such great success. Who do you have next? Dane Orge. Mr. Pinch hitter. He was, and he actually played uh, the most games in the, uh, as an outfielder in 81 and uh, actually led the team in hitting, but did have fewer at-bats than Hernandez. So technically the number of bats that particular, I think he, was, he hit like 327 or something like that that year. But an intricate part of the Cardinals in the uh, early 80s, just wanted to give him a shout out because I always liked him as a player and you know, said utility player and, and, uh, Play first in outfield, and you know, always, always liked him as a as a player for the Cardinals. There he is. I am Keith Hernandez. I love this card because it's, it's, a, an it's actual probably, shot probably one of my field. favorite, probably yeah. my favorite Hernandez card. I'm gonna put that. I gotta look at that. Uh, that that the thing is just awesome. I mean, yeah, just raw action shot. Just love it. It's it's just it's fantastic. The other thing I like, I, there he is. And matter of fact, led the team in wins that year with 10 wins. Another, well, we always, go ahead. You I was going to say, this is another freak out moment for people as of today, because we'll, mm -hmm. at least we have a 10 game winner this year, but he's struggling anyway at this particular time in, yeah. his, well, in the season. 
you and I have talked about this. I don't know what it is toward the end of, uh, well, this isn't even toward the end of, cause he was on the 87 team, but man, there are some, there are some scowls on Mr. Forsh's face on some of his cards. I don't know if you appreciate being photographed or what, but you know, Hey Bob, we're getting ready to take your, uh, tops, uh, baseball court card photo. Could you, you know, smile or not look like, yeah, you know, have enough, had it, hadn't have enough, uh, haven't had enough greens or something where you look constipated. It's just, it makes me, makes me laugh, but I know I'm going to ask you this question because this is, you know, in the early Whitey Herzog days when he's wheeling and dealing, I mean, we've, we, we obtained quite a few guys in that, in that traded set who were big parts of the following season in 82. But I'm going to go ahead and throw this guy up for Hollywood star. Yes. Bukovic, if you don't recognize him, folks, he, he was in major league. So look at Lou Haywood. Lou Haywood, yep. And there he is. I love the, I, I love this. I just love this picture too. I, it, they were just taking pictures of people back in the day. It wasn't posed. It was just like, it's this raw. <laughs> oh, and they did. And they had these cool yeah. little cartoons okay. with, with information on the back yeah. of cards too, which I really like. That's what makes it fun. If you put these, if you put all your cards in albums, and you can flip through and read all this stuff, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Hey, hold hold that one back up with Pete for just a second. I've got mine sitting off to the side. Okay. Now this is just me talking, but you know what it looks like? It looks like he's getting ready to spit jaw. <laughs> yep. That, that card has always made me laugh of him more so just because of later on his role as Clue Haywood because. Pete was a was a pitcher, but in major league, he was a he was a home run hitter for the Yankees, and that's all he did was come up to the plate and just he was obscene with his spitting of jaw. This was uh, as we met, oh there he is Tommy Her, longtime second baseman, one the long, and that's the funny thing about Cardinals and second baseman that he's the one of the longer tenured second baseman on the team for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. we had, have people at second for a long period of time so it, it's fascinating to me that we just it, yeah. it doesn't happen but i was going to say is strike short in season the cardinals actually would have finished in first probably finished in first place or technically did finish for with the overall did, best yeah. record in the national league east but it was split and they finished second in both halves of the season which were the, what was counted instead of the overall record which sounds like some convoluted little league thing that they would do today. So, but unfortunately mm -hmm. that happened to the Cardinals. And one of the other things I really liked about card sets back in the day were these things, the team card, you got them and you got Whitey up there in the corner. So he's yep. not only in the team picture, but he's featured up there in the corner. And the other really cool thing about this for collect, when you were trying to collect the Cardinals back in the day, you could flip these things over and you had a checklist right on the back. Sorry, is yours? See here, and I can't tell because of the. Do you? I I saved mine for my childhood. I decided to, uh, it's okay to have all the boxes in filled in, so I can't tell are yours filled in or not. They're not. I actually used a little notepad, and and uh, I had like one of those little uh, memo pads, and I would I would actually go back and rewrite the whole damn checklist for, so I didn't have to write on the card. Mm -hmm. And speaking of people getting swapped out and moved around, Simba. It would, been cool. it would have been cool to see the Cardinals go to the playoffs with this particular team just to see what would have happened. And it's unfortunate that it yep. didn't happen. But Hall of Fame catcher Ted Simmons would move on, obviously, after this. I, I got to hear Whitey Herzog speak several times, Andy, and he was always uh, that. I mean, he was really upset about Major League Baseball's decision because um, I'm trying to remember who was it. Was it the Reds or the Phillies that went ahead of the Cardinals just because? Are they or did they did they have a playoff because it's the two teams in the National League wasn't didn't somebody finished first the, for the first half, the Cardinals second, then somebody else finished first. Yes. I'm trying to remember how that story goes, but 
and Whitey was just absolutely livid and, and it was always a sore spot for him. How could, you know, even we had the better record, like you said. And so that really um, caused him to go all in, in terms of, and as we know from 81 and, and 80, 81, he just made a ton of player moves. Again, players on the move. Mr. Gary Templeton, fine shortstop, great hitter. I mean, unbelievable hitter. Yeah. But uh, for his unfortunate incident uh, caused his departure from St. Louis. He moved, but we moved on to bigger what and better. What was that guy's team. name? The um, one that we obtained. Wasn't he uh, famous or something? <laughs> somebody, somebody like Ozzy Smith or something like that. Yeah. yeah, but, yeah uh, that guy. Pretty interesting, pretty interesting story behind that whole trade and Ozzy coming to St. Louis and all that. So, I mean, we could you could talk for hours about that's that's what I th think is so cool about this particular time period of the uh, team. Whitey was making a lot of deals, like making a lot of moves, and there's a lot of things behind the scenes, you know, like with Ted Simmons' departure, he didn't want to move over and you know, and play for you know, Whitey had a whole plan with Porter behind the plate and Simmons going move possibly moving to first and Hernandez playing in the outfield and Simmons wasn't on board with it. That's just the, the bottom line. Yeah. Well it was interesting too because um Whitey loved guys who could play multiple positions because you know Ken Oberkfell moving from third base, you know, over to no, I'm sorry. He was not. He he moved to third base. That's what it was. Second base. I mean, it it was amazing all the different positions. I think Ozzy and and Tommy Her were probably the only two guys that didn't that didn't move a lot. Got this guy. He, he's kind of a carryover from the '70s, and uh, he would uh, depart the Cardinals as well. But what a what a glove this guy had. Just, just yep, phenomenal. Same bony. Yeah, just, just phenomenal. But I always have to show the nutty buddy inventor. Yes. <laughs> Love that one. So who you? Okay, so we're talking trades now. So we, uh, you want to move into some of the guys from the traded set or the continuation? Lots of. I mean, we did bring in quite a few good players although I'm we gonna bring, give up Simmons well first I'm going to bring I'm going to bring in a Hall of Famer there you go nice Bruce. card and the only and uh obviously this guy you know wait a minute he could actually pitch the seventh eighth and ninth it's incredible <laughs> it's and it, it's it's phenomenal how baseball has changed over the years in yep. that regard and I did, and I did cheat a little bit because here's what I and I did pull out the OPG just for fun, because that's what that card looked like. Yeah, which I that's thought awesome. Was cool, which I thought was cool too, because if you see on there mm -hmm. now yep. with the card now with the Cardinals, and it's all you know also in French on the ball cap, and and I think the if I remember correctly, the only time they did that in the set in the '80s was in the '88 set. Where they actually wrote that on there, and I think Doug DeCinze sounds right. Doug DeCinze is the only Cardinal that had that put on his card in the '80s, mm. if I remember correctly. There he is, that guy. He was something else. What a what a personality that guy had. Yeah, and you know that that he was a guy that was you know brought in through uh, through a trade, and nobody really knew who he was, and Herzog you know, could pull all the right strings and say the right things. And I don't know, one of his first outings, he just told him to chill out and you just have to worry about pitching. Love that card of him. Yeah. World series MVP right there. And he, I mean, just, dude, just guy could play some ball. Yeah. Sad to see Simba move on, but he did come in and didn't. Yeah. I mean, he proved his worth in both the uh, NLCS and in the, uh, in the World Series was just Mr. Mr. Clutch. So I got uh, Suitors and Porter's card here. If you notice the difference in the back of the card on both of these in the traded set. 
Yep. The cartoon is missing off a of Porter's uh, card. Mm -hmm. Anduhar does have it though. Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking closely. If you if you uh, look at the hats, um, it goes back to your uh, famous dirty hat. You, dirty hat. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely a dirty hat. But I mean, look at how much better it's gotten. They did it, and they did a years, but phenomenal it, job. And Brian, here's one of your favorites right here. Mr. Gene Tennis. Yeah. World Series hero for the A's. A's. And he obviously doesn't have the cartoons on the back because he had a pretty predominant career up until the time he got the Cardinals. So there was no space to put the cartoon on the uh, bottom mm -hmm. of the back of the card. He became one of those great veterans that uh, Herzog always brought in, like the Sedanos and uh, trying to remember who was the other guy that we picked up. Was it, uh, was it, I can't remember. Was it Cesar Sedan? Was it Cesar Sedano? I got to go back and look. But anyway, Whitey always picked up some great veteran during every season, it seemed like, toward the end, especially if they were pushing for the playoffs and got in. But uh, love Gene Tennis. Bob, don't call me Shirley. Mm hmm. Love that one. So, Bob, yeah, Bob, so it was Andujar. Uh, we haven't talked about the guy with the greatest name in baseball, Sixto, Sixto Lascano. <laughs> he was in the traded set. You showed Daryl. You just showed there Bob. Yep. I always liked him when he was a member of the Brewers, Sixto Lascano. We had Larry Sorensen. You showed him. You showed Bruce Sitter, and we showed Gene Tennis. And by the way, the Brewers were in the American League back in the yeah. day. Exactly. Just for everybody's reference, who don't, who's not alone, old enough to remember that or even care about that, but uh, oh, I forgot about this famous guy. Oh yeah, Bob Sykes. You want to talk about his significance, not with the Cardinals, but what happened? Go ahead, you got it. Because I got somebody else I'm bringing up next. Okay, so this guy is the individual that the Yankees were making a push. Uh, for their for the World Series in 1981, and we ended up trading Bob to the Yankees for some player named Willie McGee. So great! I always love to show Bob Sykes. So thanks. I didn't Bob. want to, I didn't want to steal your thunder on that one because that boy that was that was significant uh, to get Willie. So I would, it would be remiss if I didn't mention Kitty Cott because yeah. another Hall of Famer that was on the Cardinals at that time. The guy, I think he pitched for like 57 years or something like that. He, the, he it was phenomenal. Huh? I mean, what a what an arm this guy had, and the type of guy too to almost like have an extra uh, bullpen slash bench coach because of all of his years of uh, you know being in baseball. And you have to look at the back of his card. I'm trying to find it. I think his only World Series was actually with the Cardinals because he spent so much time with the twins he did yeah. yep twins white Sox, phillies cardinals yankees it's so small it's hard hard for me to even read it let me look yeah. here and here's it here's the one for everybody if you if you if you're not familiar the senators started out with the senators yep washington yeah Oh, I forgot about this guy. I got to show him because he was always one of my favorite utility guys. And I just love this particular thing of him with uh, Sherlock Holmes. Just look, this is Mike Ramsey here with the uh, oh yeah <laughs> ball cap. His ball cap going. Well, uh, actually, forward. some guys used to wear that back in the day like that. Yep, and then his batting helmet on backward. So love it. But yeah, Ramsey was a all over the place kind of guy for the Cardinals uh, shortstop second baseman. Now I've got myself trying to find my Jim Cott card. Where is Didn't, it? And Cott won like a hundred gold gloves too, or something like, I mean, he won a ton of gold yeah. gloves. He, he was a heck of a fielder. Oh my God. Yeah. The print is so small on here. I know. I just, what I said, I, I, I had, I threw on some readers. This I still couldn't read some of the stats on there. They're so small. It's incredible. Trying to uh, not to waste time here, but I'm trying to, there's something I was trying to look at. 
Well, I'm trying to remember too, because the Yankees were in the World Series, so he may have won a World Series with the Yankees right before he came to the Cardinals. So, so at this so at this particular time when Cot was when this was produced, he had 272 wins. That's what I was looking at. Incredible. And when he was with the Cardinals toward the end of his career, or it was the end of his career, he kind of did all sorts of things. Was his come out of the bullpen or he was a middle reliever. He did a spot start here and there. The guy had a rubber arm, that's for sure. And he's flat out knew how to pitch. Probably would have had 300 wins, you know, if he would have played on a couple of better teams. Although I do think that he was a 20 game winner for the twins once. So I, I probably wouldn't be able to read it. It's so small. <laughs> Either that or it's a speck of dust. It looks like a zero. Yep. Anyway. But overall, great set. Uh, love the design, love the color. I mean, and it's also, as you've seen before, everybody, this is also available in the Coca-Cola set. Obviously, not as many cards in it, not as many players, but it's still cool because it's got the Coke emblem on the front of the yeah. card. I think I might have that real quickly. I'll pull that up and then we can get ready to stop as I, well, I just threw it all over the floor, so now I can't get it. Oh, outside. there you go. Sorry, everybody. I really number of Hall of Fame, no, no, number of National Baseball Hall of Famers in here, and Cardinal Hall of Famers in this particular set, and uh, highly recommend it. Not a very expensive set to collect if you're looking to collect. Even if you're trying to collect that complete set from '81, it's really not that expensive. Yeah, I I actually thoroughly enjoy it, but again, I'm biased because that was in again in the throws when you and I were going crazy cutting grass and doing all sorts of things to collect money to buy wax packs and chew that nasty gum for about 13 seconds before you threw it away. So well, speaking of that, on that note, throw, um, anything something. else? Yeah. I want to, I want to throw something in real quick. My, one of my daughters and I were Ainsley. She, we went to a card shop recently and she started collecting grease cards from 1978. And, uh, she was buying wax packs of grease cards, and which was cool. She's almost and the funny thing is, just like these cards, you have nice. completed the set out of buying the wax packs. But what was in those? <laughs> the gum. I said, I will give you a dollar if you chew that gum. She did not take me <laughs> up on it. <laughs> Nasty stuff. Nasty gum. Nasty gum. Yep. All right, everybody. We're almost out of time. So uh thanks again for uh joining us uh on this edition of Bird Brain 66, reviewing the 81 tops uh set. We both uh, thoroughly enjoy this. You can find us on all sorts of social media channels, but more importantly, just keep following us and uh liking us on our YouTube, X, Facebook, uh threads and instagram so lots there but and if you got any requests let us know yeah and then keep enjoying enjoy collecting it's it's fun we're not in it for the money we're in it for the fun so we just enjoy doing it so absolutely talk to you later, everybody we will see you next time <laughs>